What's up, y'all? It's Her Games World. I'm back with another video. If you have not subscribed, make sure you do subscribe. Anyways, let's get into this. I'm going to talk about my salon horror stories. Not sure if they're necessarily horror stories to y'all, but they're things that should not have happened. And they're what, you know, the things that made me want to go into my own suite, made me want to work for myself, gave me that extra push to do what I've been wanting to do, which is be my own boss completely all across the board. My sh You feel me? Now, I'm going to jump right into this. Number one, I had a salon owner try and take my walking fees. Take my walking fees. Now I charge an extra fee when I was in the shop if you did not book a day ahead of time or before that day. You had to pay a $10 fee on top of your service fee to come get service by me the same day. So I'm fitting you in my schedule. I'm making time unplanned. Okay. I saw the woman take my walk-in fee. Her response was, all the walk-in fees belong to me. Now, first of all, I'm a booth runner at this point, an independent contractor. I read over all contracts I say, and nowhere in the contract did it say that my walk-in fees would be taken or I would have discussed that before I signed the contract. Now, what really blew me about this was she forgot that I was on a contract. <laughs> That's the day I found out that a lot of people in that shop were not on contracts, they were on commission, which is cool, but... I'm like, dang, because in the back of my mind, I'm saying to myself, how many walking fees has she taken before I noticed that she took this walking fee? I had plenty of walkings by that time. Blew me. I felt bamboozled. I didn't know if I was getting robbed or not. Wasn't feeling that. Number two. I had a full book one day. Now, remind you, I've been in like three phone salons, okay? Each salon I learned from, there were pros and cons. There's pros and cons to every salon, period. Like I said, being in a salon just is not for me. But anyway, I walked in the salon this day with a full book of clients, and the LG&E was out. Not only was the LG&E out, nobody sent me a text or anything before I came in to work to let me know. Also, nobody... You know, offered to reimburse me or anything. Like, it just kind of threw me. I was just like, damn. I just can't do my clients. Threw me off. You know, everybody learns together. Everybody I've worked for, I feel like, was learning with me. Was that moving on to a different point, point in their career and learning. So I'm not knocking anybody, I'm not knocking anybody's businesses. Everybody has to grow. Everybody has to make mistakes. But again, this is the things that I went through that made me want to get into my own suite. Number three, I had a client, a very consistent client that I love dealing with, and she was sitting up under the dryer. Now, the ceiling was leaking in the slide. When the water came through, it fell onto the electric dryer and onto my client's lap. Thank God she did not get electrocuted and thank God she did not go off on me because I was so scared of what her reaction was going to be. She definitely was turned off, I could tell, but she really liked how I did her hair, so she really wasn't tripping on me. But, what the... Anyway, number four. I went into a shop at a point where I didn't know much about booking systems. It was my first time on a booking system. So the lady put me on her booking system. There was two things that went wrong with this situation that I learned from. First of all, when you are on somebody's booking system, you need full access. When I left that lady's shop, she took my whole clientele list, locked me out of the booking system. There was nothing I could do about it. People literally had to find me on Facebook, the one that did, the ones that did, or maybe they happened to have my number because she was not giving me my clients, okay? That was just like, wow, why would you take my clients? I pay boofering every month, okay? Why would you take my clients? Now, this will go into the next thing that I talk about, but the second thing that went wrong with this booking system was 
I, everything that my clients were paying me was going into her account. When it came time to pay me at one point, she didn't have my money. She let me know that she was not expecting me to be right behind her as far as the money we were making. I don't think she was aware that I was coming into the shop with a clientele base I already built. She kind of tried to count my pockets and it turned into a whole situation because I need my money and I need my money now because it's my money and it's my money and you gotta give me my money, honey. Where's my money? My money. You feel what I'm saying? So that was another thing. Another thing I went through as far as being in salons, I had went to a salon that was a really nice salon. And I really liked it. I liked the vibe. I liked the girls that was working there. But it was an area that my clientele didn't want to come to. I didn't even realize I was that far in the hood, but I was in the hood. And I had a client tell me that she was not coming to that location because she does not come to that part of the city. And as I asked more questions about that part of the city, I realized I was in the hood, hood. People was getting shot up, robbed, all type of stuff around there. I had no idea. Same place I kept getting nails in my tires. I kept getting nails in my tires. Like I went through three tires with nails in them in that short amount of time I was working on. There was so many signs, like, I didn't even want to stay late. That's a whole nother thing, like, you know, as a stylist, sometimes we end up in the shops late and the environment needs to be safe. Like, I was just like, okay, I had to leave. Then I was in a shop where the booth, where the salon owner kept asking me, did I want to pay my booth for early like I'm not sure if she was going broke I'm not sure really what was going on but she kept asking me that I want my to pay portions of my booth from early and I'm like no I'm gonna pay every Friday like everybody else like why are you hounding me while I'm doing her to pay you now when I already paid you for last week and now you want me to pay you for this week ahead of time that's not how that works <sighs> I've been through some stuff, y'all. Another thing, I've been in two different salons where they decided to start planning events. And when they decided to start planning these events, it was in times where I wanted to work. Like, I had times where they would be like, you can't work this Saturday because we have an event. It's not in my contract. Saturdays, boom. If you establish Saturdays, boom. Weekends, boom. What? What? I didn't like that. I didn't like that. Maybe I'm just picky. I don't think I was being inconsiderate. I think it was inconsiderate of my money because I'm an independent contractor. This is nowhere in the contract. And I went to school to create my own schedule and people not tell me what to do as far as my schedule. Tell me when I can work and when I cannot work. And I don't appreciate paying booth rent anywhere where y'all gonna all of a sudden tell me I can't work certain days. No, I couldn't do it. <laughs> I couldn't do it. These are horror stories to me, okay? You don't even understand. Like, I'm a very easygoing type of person. I like to go in, work, and keep it moving. Now, there's another shop I was in where, okay, it was some messy stuff going on. I was doing my client. The salon owner walked up and says, Something about another booth renter that was working there. Now, it threw me through a loop because I'm doing hair. I'm like, I'm doing a client that can hear you. It would be different if you pulled me to the side and wanted to vent, but she didn't do that. She decided to talk bad about the girl in front of my client and in front of the girl behind me that was in the booth behind me's client. Everybody heard this, okay? And I was so irritated. I was so irritated because who wants their clients to think they're messy and who wants to be in the middle of stuff with the people that they work with? Nobody. I didn't like that. So I told her, you know, leave me alone with that. You know, I'm not with that. Now, long story short, this is why I don't like being in the messy stuff. The girl client that was behind me was also 
the girl's client that she was talking about. And the girl turned around and told her every single thing the next day. Bedrooming, messiness in the shop, throws me. I've been through some things that have made me say, I don't want things the same. And I went and got my own stuff, honey, okay? I remember being in a shop where they told me I could not upsell items and that was not in the contract. Like I have been through things that I just don't really understand. And I feel like shouldn't go on in the salon. So that's just some of my experiences. I might have more in my head somewhere, I'm not sure. But those were some of my experiences that made me want to go into a suite by myself. Or at least open up something where people can work with me that I like dealing with. Like, <laughs> peace is prosperity. You feel me? Period. I don't like the messiness. Like I said, I am not knocking anybody that I worked for. Literally every salon I went to, I learned. Whether it was good or bad, I'm thankful for it because I was able to learn. I was able to grow. It put me closer to the decisions that I needed to make for the path that I needed to go on for me. So I'm not knocking nobody. We all learn together. We all figure out things together. It is what it is. It might have been a, a point in time in their lives where they were figuring things out just as well as me. So I'm not tripping on nobody. I'm not knocking nobody. Every salon that I was in, the people was eating. Every salon just was not for me. So like I said, those are my experiences. Those are my horror stories. Ooh, horror stories. That made me want to go into my own suite. But anyway, make sure that you subscribe.